Hello, and welcome to uh, Mrs. Keating's brief explanation of the Edict of Nantes, the um, differences between the Reformation in England and France, Protestant beliefs different from Catholic beliefs, um, and then the Catholic Reformation video. So our first thing that we need to go through, oops, sorry about that, is let's look at the, in, in France, England and France both were the same. England and France were both experiencing Catholic and Protestants speaking, uh, fighting. And it becomes, while they're a religious battle, it's more of a political battle. In, Fran in the French Civil War, you had the Guy's family, and then that were Catholics, and you had the Bourbon family fighting in the South. The, um, during, this, during this battle, one of the things that happens is the king, neither Guy's nor Bourbon, Bourbon he's actually Valets, the king of France, um, they end up supporting, the king of France supports the Catholics. And on August, 24, on August 24th, 1572, you have the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre, which is interesting because Catherine, who is leading France at this time and encourages the Catholics to attack the Huguenots, her daughter had actually married, um, had actually married, um, into the Bourbon family, and it was on. The, it was around that wedding celebration that this massacre happened. That leads you. So you have this French of French Civil War, and so you see this Henry of Narve. He is Bourbon. What eventually happens is the Valise family runs out of heirs. Only males can inherit the the throne of France. There was no male heirs. Henry of Narve will become king of France. What ends up happening is he is Protestant, but the majority of France is Catholic. So he gets this he gets this this incident which he's dealing with. And what ends up happening is he realizes he wants to be king more than he wants to be Protestant. So he converts to Catholicism. But he's go he's going to face this civil war. So what he does, because his friends were Protestant, his friends were the Huguenots. So what he did is he, he enables the Edict of Nantes, which will grant religious rights to the Huguenots. It does not grant free religious freedom for all. It allows the Huguenots to practice their religion in every place in France except where there is a Catholic majority, for example, in Paris. It did not grant religious um, freedom, for example, for Jews, but it's our first example of religious toleration beginning to develop. Interesting thing in um, the Edict of Nantes will be revoked later on um, when we study absolutism under um, Louis the Fourteenth. Now we have so that you can see a little bit of the difference where Elizabeth makes a new church, the Anglican Church. What France does is they with the Edict of Nantes, they go and they create, they allow some religious toleration with the Edict of Nantes allowing French Huguenots to practice in, even though the King of France is now Catholic. So, the Catholic Church during this time <coughs> is facing all kinds of conflicts. You had battle lines drawn between Protestants and Catholics. If you look the north of Europe was Protestant. The south, especially the closer you get to Rome, the more likely your country is to be Catholic. So Protestants, again, which we talked about, Luther. Pope is not the authority. The clergy in the Protestant church could marry. Um, in the Protestant, in the Catholic church, there are many sacraments. In most of the Protestant churches, they became symbolic. Also, the Bible became the source of Christian belief. That was more important than church doctrine. And um, it also had an effect, the Reformation had an effect, um, it, because of the development of the uh, Protestant beliefs, especially under Calvin, you get the beginning of the modern economy. Um, 
the idea of the modern family comes under <coughs> under the idea of the modern family becomes uh, extolled under the Protestant system. So the Catholics have a problem. They are losing followers. They are they are draining worshipers, and they need these worshipers. So what they do is you have the Catholic or Counter-Reformation. And the idea was to take those Protestants, fix the problems that were in the church, and bring the reformer, bring the Protestants back, and to basically stop the spread of the Protestant Reformation. There are three methods that these um, the church will use, which are traditional methods, the church council, the creation of religious orders, and the Inquisition, yeah, 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 uh, Mel Brooks. The Inquisition, which is a Spanish court, um, not a Spanish court, the Inquisition, which is a court to stamp out heresy. So, uh, the Council of Trent, of course, is, is held in Trent, okay? Um, it is held in um, the city of Trent, which is between German and Italy. Remember from our vocabulary, no Protestants, so no new Lutherans or Calvinists was present. This is a church leadership, and you'll notice church leadership means it's the, it's the cardinals and bishops. Um, the Council of Trent will establish the main Catholic doctrine, and what they say is it said papal power was, a, was, was supreme. The church had the final say in religious majors, religious faith. They said that Catholics, for us, for Catholics to get to heaven, you have to have salvation by works and faith. Faith alone, Martin Luther believes in justification by faith. The church says that's not enough. You have to do good works. Also, the church, not the individual, interprets the Bible. For the Protestants, both Luther and Calvin, the church, the individual interprets the Bible. They did fix the indulgences. They still allow indulgences. You can't sell them. They did keep the Mass in Latin, where the Protestant churches were doing the Mass in, um, in the vernacular, the language of the people. So then they also, with the religious doctrine, they said the Bible and church tradition. Protestants, the Bible was the only source of religious truth. For Catholics, it's Bibles and religious, Bibles and the church teachings. All right, so you get this new seriousness in the Catholic Church. You get uh, the popes who want it, these popes come in and they want to reform the abuses, but they do want to keep their power. Now what you have happen in England is you're going to have in Spain, the Spanish are going to be Catholics, and they are going to help lead out the Reformation, um, try to get rid of this Protestant negative influence. So when we see this, we see um, Philip going to Elizabeth. He had the religious movement motive, <coughs> Elizabeth being Protestant, he being Catholic. Also, uh, Elizabeth was sending ships to attack his gold from South America, gold and silver shipments. So there was a economic motive too and political. Your next method of uh, reform was the religious orders. The, you've got these new fervent missionaries, Jesuits. Je the Jesuits are the Society of Jesus and what they are going to do is not only are they going to swear obedience to the Pope, but they are going to become the educators. Georgetown University in uh, D.C. Is, is a Jesuit school. They become the educators of the, ch of the church, the missionaries. The Jesuits will be the ones who will go out with Martin Luther. I'm sorry, will go out with Christopher Columbus, not Martin Luther. They don't agree with Martin Luther at all. The Jesuits will, they will become the educators. They will become the missionaries. They will become the advisors to the church. They will be the militant arm. They will be the one going out, educating the, the future priest, educating the population, converting the Native Americans in Spanish colonies. As I said, they were advisors to the king. They um, were top schools even today. It was an elite education. Um, there are 46 Jesuit colleges in the United States today, so they're still influencing church today. Like I said, they were dedicated missionaries. 
they were active in the Americas, um, as we said, because they came with the Spanish. Um, as you can see, they were fervent uh, trying to get Protestants to convert. Um, and then you have the Roman Inquisition in 1542, which is this church court that burned, that um, tried to stamp out heresy. Galileo is going to be one of the, the victims of the Roman Inquisition. And what, what does he say that's so bad? Is he says he can, he can prove that using the telescope that the sun is the center of the, of the solar system, not the earth. <coughs> the um, Inquisition will also publish an index of for forbidden books. So these were books that Catholics were not to read. This is an example of censorship. So if you're in a Catholic controlled country, you're not going to have access to the works of John Calvin or Martin Luther. They're going to be banned. Um, these are some books we, the, the um, Catholics still um, promote a list of um, books that have been, pro been uh, banned by the Catholic Church. And these are some um, of the famous books, but these are some that of, from the late 20th century that has also been banned. I don't know why Alma has been banned. So what are the results of the um, Protestant Reformation? Well, you get Catholics and Protestants fighting. The area that uh, becomes modern Germany will face the Thirty Years' War. You will have Europe split permanently between a Protestant North and a Catholic South. You will have this race to the New World um, with the new discovered lands of um, Columbus, and Protestants and Catholics will race there to compete, and you will have religious wars break out in Europe. It will be a period of turmoil, but then it will allow some of the ideas and some of the changes to go because you get this idea that the country becomes more important than the religion, uh, more important than the individual. You're going to get the solidification of countries instead of city-states. So big changes. Was it a game changer? You tell me. <laughs>